everybody this is the only reason Betty is here and in it goes okay <laughs> and off we go good morning and welcome 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 oh let me just check I haven't no I haven't twisted my microphone because they get in trouble with Christopher if I do that don't I Christopher yes you do oh uh, good morning welcome I hope everyone is well we are here to make felt daffodils. So it's that time of year, they're all out everywhere. I actually had a thought during the week. I thought, I must get some fresh daffodils for Sunday. I haven't done that, have I? No, I've Gillian. <laughs> I've only got felted ones, I'm afraid, sorry. I've got some at home, but yeah. That, that didn't quite uh, transform into bringing them in here. Anyway, we're going to make felt daffodils, which are um, relatively straightforward. It's one of the projects in my book, Felting Fabulous Flowers. Um, it's helpful, if I'm honest, to have a copy of the book when you're making it, just because there are lots of templates in the back. And you could, sorry, I've got a bit of wool hanging out of it to mark a page. Um, it's quite helpful because there's templates in the back which you could then cut around. The dog's having a funny five minutes again. It's like, she's so weird. She knows that we're about to go live on air and she gets ready and she's ready to get on the chair because she wants the treat. And then we go through this whole rigmarole of her wriggling a lot and then coughing, potentially. She's literally being hilarious. Um, Anyway, so what we're going to do is we're going to make this from scratch using wet felting and using needle felting. Um, I do put in the book that you could make this from ready-made felt if you absolutely had to, but uh, you're just not going to get those kind of variations of colour and texture. It's so, so, so much better to make it from wool tops if you can. If you don't know what wool tops are, unspun wool, we have merino wool tops in over 70 different colours that we sell from our website. Today I'm going to be using primarily bright yellow, bright orange, and then like, here we go, there's the coughing. Have you finished? Oh, uh, bright yellow, bright orange, I'm going to be using a bit of gold, I'm going to be using a bit of lime green, although I might have just possibly brought the wrong colour with me, but never mind. Oh, um, and then there's lots of other colours you can make. You know, daffodils come in so many different sort of hues and shades and varieties. Um, we do also do a baby yellow wool top. And we do also do one called custard, my favourite food, um, which would also make great daffodils, so the pastel, pastel -y ones. And then sometimes the centres aren't always bright orange, and I was thinking you could use peach as well if you were wanting to have a little bit of variation and make a bunch or something, or make several different ones. Anyway, um, so in my book for the, for the felt daffodils, it says you need 30 grams of yellow, 30 grams of orange, and then smaller amounts of gold and green, and you'll see why in a second. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how to use the wool tops to actually felt, make a piece of felt that you're gonna make the daffodil from, okay? So the very first thing that I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna run through what equipment you'll need if you want to do that. With the wet felting, what you're really gonna need is a little bamboo mat and a piece of netting. Uh, that's what I'm gonna be using to make 
the actual piece of felt. Then I'm going to be using a piece of foam and a felting needle. <laughs> she's still going. She's got turning into this. She's at nearly 10 now and she's turning into coughing and spluttering dog. I think maybe she's allergic to wool. Who that knows? would be a travesty, wouldn't it? It would, wouldn't it? Um, anyway, so we're going to use the, 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 the foam and the felting needles as well to the, do the needle felty bits. So nearly all of the flowers in my book, I use a combination of the two different sorts of felting. You know, when I make roses, I start off with wet felting and then I needle felt them together. I've got a few different flowers on the table, actually. I've already done a tutorial about how to make the poppy from my book, so that's also on YouTube if you want to watch it. And again, I use a combination of wet felting and needle felting. I've just got, I'll just show you a couple of the flowers, show you. This is the, um, the fuchsia. Do you want to go to the overhead, uh, darling, so people can yes, see? Yes, lady. He's been practicing his, uh, his sound effects all morning. Right, so that's the fuchsia. I don't know if you can go super close, can you? Oh, yes, testing times, <laughs> testing times. Come on then, quick, quick, quick. There we go. Uh, so yeah, that's the fuchsia. You can see with the stamens. Everything's made from felt in my book. I didn't use any kind of separate silk bits or anything. There's another one. Then I've got the tulip here to show you because it's kind of a tulipy time of year. Can you see the middle of the tulip there? What is it? Is it? Is it? What? What's that sound effect for? I don't understand. It's spring. Oh, spring. Oh, my God. And then there's the cherry Spell blossom. I know. Anyway, there's a few flowers for you to see. Okay. So I just thought that hibiscus. There we go. Uh, so if you're interested, um, you need to get a copy of my book if you'd like to make all of the others because they're all in there. All right. So let's move on because I know you want to know how to make the daffodils. So I'm going to start off with my wool tops and I'm going to show you how to lay that out and how to make the piece of felt. I'm going to run through this quite quickly because I do have other tutorials on here showing you how to make a flat piece of wet felt. So I'm just going to run through it just briefly, really. Starting with the, uh, the yellow, now I'm going to lay this directly onto my bamboo mat, okay, which is on uh, a tea towel, which I've got underneath on a, on a waterproof covering on the table. The most important thing when you are making wet felt, pieces of wet felt, is how you pull the wool apart and how you lay it down. How do you do that, Gillian? And how long you rub it for. So it's really, really important. If you only listen to one thing I'm saying and you just scoot over the rest, listen to this. Mark me. <laughs> he actually says that quite a lot. Just when we wonder, you know, mark, mark me. me. Um, who was it that said it? Bonnie Prince Charlie. Bonnie Prince Charlie okay, in, the you. Out, in Outlander. In Outlander, that was it. So you're holding it in the hand you don't write in. Then your dominant hand is pulling off the fibres. I think that's the best way to do it. Hold it about six to eight inches down, because if you hold it too high up, you're holding onto the fibres. Hold it down far enough so you can release the fibres without holding onto them. And look how long they are. I'm wearing a black top so you can see. Okay. So if I hold those there you can see they go all the way down to there okay so if I was holding it up any higher I wouldn't be able to pull them off right so always hold it down there and then you are releasing these fibers you're just taking the very very tips of them and you're just pulling them off should be easy to pull them off okay so if you're grabbing too much of this you can't pull it off if you're holding it up too high you can't pull it off right so we're releasing the fibers okay so now i've gone through that if you want to go to the overhead shop please my sweet thank you no not that, that one. one. Oh that yes that one right so what that. i'm going to do is i'm going to lay these in the opposite direction to the slats okay so the slats are going left to right i'm laying this top to bottom like this now okay so i'm just going to start off by laying out one layer of the yellow like so sorry i did that one the wrong way around and then as i lay it out i sort of overlap it as i go so i can make a square of yellow that's what i'm aiming for here a square of yellow wool tops let's do one more row and then i'm going to do another layer in the opposite direction so this will help you to get an evenly sized piece of felt at the end because these fibers will shrink that way and these fibers that I'm laying in the opposite direction will shrink that way so it won't just go in one direction when it shrinks it will shrink evenly one hopes 
Okay, so I am doing this super fast, but let me show you in slow motion again. So I'm grabbing the very ends of the fibers here, holding it so that I'm not holding on too tightly, not too high up, and then I am releasing the fibers. Okay, so it's quite a small amount. Can you see how wispy they are? Okay. Oh, that's very wispy. Very wispy. What you don't want to do, there's not, you don't do this. Don't go like that. It's too much. No. <laughs> Mark me. Okay, mark me. Uh, so I'm just going to go carry on going in this way like so. I'm just doing this super fast because I know some of you have seen this and done this before. Who's out there today? Who have we got watching today? Where are you all Ooh. hailing from this well, morning? Uh, Amy yes. on Facebook yes. in North Carolina. Oh my goodness Freezing me. here. Do oh. some spring daffodils. Yes. We need some spring yes. daffodils. Yes, and, and goodness gracious, what time is it? It must be I don't know. A, a weird time of day or night. All right, uh, so now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take the orange and I'm actually going to kill two birds with one stone here and create a piece of orange at the end here, which I don't need to be quite so big. So I'm just going to... Oh, wrong way to start, wrong way to start. So I'm going to start off by laying it this way just butting up here to the yellow. And this will give me enough, certainly to make one daffodil, but it, you'll definitely get more out of this. The only thing that you might need to do is make subsequent pieces of orange with another edge because it's the end here, this edge that you're after when you're making the trumpet of the daffodil. But I'm just going to show you it like this for now. Um, but you could equally make two separate pieces which would give you more edges but I'm just going to kill two birds with one stone here so that's kind of what you're after and that is enough okay you don't need to make this any thicker because um, you want to be able to manipulate these fibers once they've turned into felt okay do you like my nails I've, I've put flowers on my nails look especially oh, what I didn't realize was that I've put the daffodil on the middle finger Sorry about that. <laughs> um, okay, so there we go. That's that. Now I need to find my netting. So when you buy our little uh, basic mini mat, what do we call it? We call a mini basic kit for wet felsing is what we call it. It's 5 95 You get a piece of netting which covers the mat, okay? I've just got a random piece here that I found in the studio. It's slightly larger, but it does the trick. What I am gonna do is I'm just gonna move my felt flowers out of the way so that I don't get them all the new wool, in fact, wet. Okay, all right. So I'm just gonna show you how to wet this down. I'm not gonna go through the whole procedure, but what I've got here is some um, washing up liquid or detergent if you're in the States, uh, you know, dishwashing detergent, the stuff that bubbles, uh, mixed with lukewarm water, okay? You're just gonna mix that up. You want about a dessert spoonful, tablespoonful of the uh, washing up liquid. The rest is lukewarm water. So you don't want really hot, don't want really cold. You don't want to felt it too quickly and shock it. You want to felt it slowly and be in control of it, all right? And then you're also gonna need a bar of soap. This is a strange looking bar of soap because it's square. It smells divine, it's olive oil soap, but you can use any soap the cheapest soap from the supermarket what, any soap any soap it's the alkalinity of the soap that is important Ooh, not what not anything else so not the fact that it's got olive oil in it okay not the fact that it's already i mean you could just use washing up liquid you could use liquid soap in the olden days you used to use soap flakes and i i think there's probably some argument for having slightly less lava because some people might say that the bubbles get in the way of the fibers yada yada but you know any soap any soap all right so you could spray this on but actually you'd be there for days just move these slippers out of the way as well um so what i'm actually going to do is i'm just going to take the lid of this off I'm you speaking rebel. Up, stick my finger in the top and i'm just gonna sprinkle it all over the top here like this then Try not to knock that over, Gillian. I'm just going to, a dishcloth, that's all that is. And I'm just going to push this through the fibres. Now, it's very difficult. If you've not done it before, or not done it much before, it's difficult for you to know how much soapy water to sprinkle on and put on when you first put it on. You're going to have to put on a fair bit, all right, because you want to wet all of the fibres through completely. But what you don't want to do is, is cause a sort of swimming pool situation uh, where you end up with lots of water 
around it, all over the table, um, and it's like it's sitting in a big puddle of water. That's not good because the water will impede the felting process and it will make it much more difficult for you to get it to felt together. All right. So I'm just going to add one more sploodoosh here and here where I can see that it's not quite flattened down. And you can see I'm just holding this down with one hand, pushing the fibres with the cloth with the other hand. I do tend to do it going in the direction that I've laid the fibres in, but in this case I've laid them in both directions, so it doesn't make an awful lot of difference. Um, but be, just be mindful that, you know, they're very sort of delicately laid out underneath. So what you don't want to do is you don't want to disturb the netting and you want to keep it completely flat and sort of taut over the top of the fibres, OK? So I'm just going to make sure this is completely flat. So what I'm aiming for here is to not have any air in the fibres. I'm just going to add a little tiny bit more there. And then I think we're off. And what we want to try and do is create a lava. Ooh, create a lava. Ooh, what, what a, a lava. lava. <laughs> um, so you'll only get a lava, A, if you've got enough soap, and B, if it's wet enough, OK? Otherwise, it's just not going to happen. So do it slowly. Build it up slowly. Now I'm just going to add my soap over the top, just for an, a little bit of extra alkalinity, OK? and a little bit of extra soapiness, which is going to aid me rubbing it. OK, now, Christopher, you've been watching me making felt now for some time. What do we need to check for now to make sure that it's the right amount of wetness and the right amount of soapiness? Um, I think you've got the dipstick on the left hand <laughs> side. You dip it in and you what? check to see Stop, you're going if to the moisture comes up to <laughs> no, the no, no. or I, no i think you're, or, conf you're confusing or, it with the car battery okay. or mm, yeah you can see if you can write your name yes in that's the, it in the in the in soapiness the so you need to be able to see your name when you write it in the soapiness and if you can't and you do write that it in the soapiness sorry you write it in the soapiness is that what i just said yeah. <laughs> you need to be able to write it in the soapiness <laughs> losing the plot okay so you need enough soapiness so that you can write your name and you can see your name okay and basically you're just going to now carry on rubbing this it's very important that this net stays flat and taut it's completely pointless rubbing it like this with the net moving no you've got the sound down no yes belady <laughs> So Pardon keep. Oh, are those your favourite two sound effects? Those this are morning? my sound sound effects du jour. <laughs> sound effects du jour. Love it. Okay, I didn't know those were going to be sound effects du jour. By the way, everyone, this is a surprise to me, as it's as much of a surprise to you. Right. So I'm not going to bore you with this. You would rub this now for about ten minutes, okay? And then when you've rubbed it for ten minutes, you're going to carefully peel the net back and it should come back and away fairly easily like that okay and then what you do and I'll be able to do it now actually pick it up as a piece of fabric okay turn it over to the other side and then rub that for another 10 minutes obviously with the net on top of it still so you put the net back over the top you'd rub this for another 10 minutes okay and then when you've done that if you come back to me a sec now Chris please when you've done that, then there's a whole series of rinsing under the tap and rolling it in the bamboo mat. And I suggest you go off and have a look at my other tutorials on here showing you how to make a flat, wet piece of felt if you're not sure how to do that. And obviously that's also outlined in the book as well. So you need to, I, I, would, I would urge you to make sure that you rub it for long enough because most problems that arise in my experience of many years of teaching many people in the studio is that they don't want to rub it for long enough because they're boring. a bit bored. It's boring, a bit boring. Rubbing. They want to move on to the next step and get it rinsed, get it made. Ta-da! But, but, and especially when you're making these flowers, your investment of time will pay off, okay? So invest in the rubbing. Rub it for long enough 
rub it for longer than you think you should and then you'll end up with a better piece of felt and it will be it would be better felted and it would be better to use to turn into the flowers so if you don't rub it for long enough and you don't roll it for long enough you'll get a quite a fluffy piece of felt which is fine then i've nothing against fluffy felt but if you want your flowers to uh, be easier to make and to look better when you finish them I advise that you just invest the time so none of this is made in half an hour like you, you can't sort of they are oh, quickly make a daffodil in half an hour <laughs> you've got to sort of invest some time in it if you want it to look good okay so spend some time making the piece of felt first is my top advice. I'm just now going to move that out of the way. Once you've rinsed it, you then roll it in the bamboo mat back and forth. I'll just sort of just emulate that for you, just in case you don't know what that means. When I say roll it in the bamboo mat, once it's been rubbed for long enough and rinsed for long enough, all you do is you're rolling it up like this, okay? And then you roll it like this 20 times in each direction on both sides. So that's one direction, okay? And then when you're rolling it in this direction, obviously the whole thing doesn't fit in. So you would then just fold it in half and that's fine. It won't attach together just for 20 rolls. So you don't need to worry about that. And then you'd roll it up. Tighter the better, you need to roll it up really tightly and then you'd roll it for another 20 times in this direction, okay? And then, uh, and so on. So let me just quickly explain what I mean. You keep turning it clockwise. You do 20 that way, you do 20 that way. Then you turn it over and you do 20, 20, 20, 20. And then you're in a, in a situation where it's probably like half felted. So then you go back to the sink, you rinse it again. This time you use very hot water. You get all the soap out with very cold water and kind of shock it a bit with the temperatures. And then you come back and you repeat that whole process again. All right. So really invest the time in rubbing it and then make sure that you uh, rinse it and roll it correctly. And then you should end up with a lovely, well-made piece of felt. Ta-da! So here's one I prepared earlier. I've just made a, quickly made a piece yesterday. Now, what you could do when you're laying out the fibres is you could use a little bit of gold in there. You could use some of the other colours I mentioned. You could make them a little, little, little bit more sort of, um, not three-dimensional, but give it some more depth uh, by using the different colours together. But you can also add it on afterwards when you're needle felting. Okay, so there's two options there for that. So um, I've already cut a bit of this out, but what you can do uh, if you've got the book <laughs> is trace the um, design at the back. Okay, so at the back of the book, in my second piece of yellow fluff, at the back, just bear with, caller, bear with, bear with, bear with. Here at the back, you can see, or maybe you can't, yes, you can. Um, there's lots and lots of templates for all of the different flowers that are in the book, okay? one of which is the daffodil which happens to be this one here okay so um you can do that if you don't have my book and um, for some reason you feel like you shouldn't then um i suppose essentially it's kind of like a six-pointed star you could probably draw two triangles and work from there maybe and just sort of taper them and round the petals all right but i recommend tracing that getting that on there cutting that out now i do just want to show you my little slippers here which i made eons ago ages ago i think i made them before i wrote the book actually and these have got double petaled daffodils no way. away so um i've done two lots yeah so you know poetic license to a frilly daffodil with lots of petals or you could just do the single one all right so what i wanted to just explain as well is that once you've cut it out then what i like to do because i am gillian harris <laughs> is i wet felt it again i know you don't need to do that but i hate the cut edges and i think um what i really like about wet felting is the finished edge. I remember like when, when so, well, sometimes in the past when I've run workshops for children and they sort of make a picture and then they want to cut the edge off. I'm like, no, that's the best bit because that's that sort of natural frilly edge that you get when after, after it's felted. Anyway, uh, so with some of the flowers, I remember doing it with the lily as well. I make, I make the petals and um, 
Oh no, that's that's different. I did that a different way. But with this, I cut this out and then I wet felted it again. So what I mean by that is I cut out the shape, then I stick it back on the bamboo mat, I spray it with the soapy water, I get the soap out and I just manipulate it again with the soap for another 10 minutes or so. And then I rinse it again and then I roll it again. And then your edges are kind of more well felted. Um, and, it, and it also makes it go slightly not symmetrical and slightly sort of sticky outy. And I still did, I did trim some of the petals again after I'd done that because they were looking a little bit too sticky outy. But it just gives it a slightly different look. The other thing that you can do while it's still wet, and I forgot to do it when it was still wet, is you can pull the petals out sideways so that they start to overlap each other a little bit. Again, makes it look slightly more realistic and less like you've just cut something out of a piece of felt that you'd already bought. So these are things just to make it your own, make it look more handmade and like you've made it from scratch, okay? I would recommend maybe just putting a little bit of other colours into the mix when you're making the felt and then when, you, when you've cut it out, and it's if it's still wet, just, just pull them out a little bit, okay? Just elongate them sideways, the petals, just, just to give it a better look, okay? I didn't do that, so I'm kind of cross with myself that I didn't do that. But I'm going to show you now how to needle felt some kind of interest onto it and then we'll move on to the trumpet part of the daffodil and indeed the stamens very important all right so let me get this in the right place on the table which I'm hoping is there is it Christopher please yes okay so with this I've just got this on a piece of our film foam film 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 foam foam that's foam. what that is foam, foam. 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 um foam. I've got um some 38 gauge star, star felting needles here look there's my daffodil I better not just use that finger on its own. I've actually got a 36 gauge triangular there just in case I need it. Probably won't use that. Um, and then here we go. So I've got some gold, okay? I've got some more of the yellow if I need it. And so I'm just gonna start off just by showing you the one from the book. And you can see that it's just got these little lines going down here. You can see how the petals are slightly sort of frilly around the edge, okay? And you can do this with the felting needle okay so we can we can make that happen to a certain extent so just taking off really 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 small little tiny tiny pieces of gold okay and just laying them where you want them to be wrong needle um, then just stab them into place now again I would probably spend quite a long time doing this just to make it look exactly right. But you can see how that starts to work. And also the action of stabbing into the petal in certain places will kind of cup it a little bit. So you'll be able to achieve this slightly cupped look if you haven't remembered it to uh, pull it out sideways like I didn't. Uh, but you can see the kind of effect that you get with that. So I'm just going to do a couple more. So if you've not needle felted before, this is a felting needle, very, very sharp don't stick it in your fingers only stick it in the wall it's got little barbs going up the side of it I don't know if you can see them you probably can. if I twist it you might be able to okay and those barbs are going to entangle the fibers as you stab in and out here it's important to just use these gently okay there's absolutely no reason on earth why this would break or snap doing what I'm doing now sometimes if you stab it into something that's quite dense i.e. like a felt ball or something similar or like when I'm making this for example and this has got a felt ball base so this is quite dense and I've made these if you're stabbing into something like that then you run the risk of snapping this needle and it tends to snap along here at this weak point where it goes from the thick bit to the thin bit so really be careful when you're using them but just stabbing into a flat piece of felt like this there's absolutely no reason why it should snap but you know you are just gently stabbing so you're not like doing you know voodoo stabbing um, even though you might want to, it is a gentle action. And you'll see that these fibers then come through the back. They will attach themselves to the foam a little bit, but you can see that just gives you a little bit of depth there and a little bit of interest from the color. So just pulling off tiny, tiny bits and just working around the petals here as you go and doing that until you're happy. Okay. Patricia. Yes. 
on Facebook yes. asks, yes. do you have to wait until the felt is dry before you cut it out? Well, that's a very good question. And, and when I run, very, very uh, when I run my... Um, <laughs> when I run my courses and we're making poppies and roses and such like, we do not wait for it to dry. Um, I mean, we could you could possibly iron it. In fact, I just left this on the radiator for half an hour and it was dry. What, so my preference would be that I would wait for it to be dry, but I also often work when it's not dry. Okay, so you've That's got the got option. That's got that sorted then. <laughs> Clear as mud. <laughs> so, my, yeah, I think in an ideal scenario, yes, would be my answer. But if time is against you and you don't have time, then yes, you can work on it when it's wet as well. Now, here's another thing. You've mm. been you've been learning your Spanish. Uh, and si. there's a lady oh, no. who I think <laughs> is in Chile. Here we go. And I think she's asking me to turn on the subtitles, si. which I can't, I claro. don't think I can do in a live. Oh, claro so que si. if you could just tell her that if she goes and looks at the, the, at the <laughs> oh recording later on, the subtitles should be available for her I don't in know. the what language is Spanish, of her choice. What is Spanish for subtitles? Is it subtitles? Closed I'd, captions. Yeah, I do not know how to, if you'd, if you'd told me beforehand, perhaps I should learn that. Perhaps I should learn that in Spanish. And then I'd be able to say it. Maybe um, you should. Yeah, I'm not going to even attempt it because I'm going to make an idiot of myself. All right, so you get the general idea, the general gist with this, with the getting the stripes down the petals here, just adding a bit more interest to it. All right, so let's move on to the trumpet because that's the bit that takes quite a bit of time and quite a bit of felting. So you can see here, can you go to the next shot out, please, uh, Christopher? Thank you. So you can see here that I've got the piece of felt that I finished, and it's this lovely finished edge that I'm after here. All right, that's what you're after. You're going to need about 10 centimeters by about two and a half centimeters or something like that. Uh, let me find my scissors. So I've just marked that with some pins, and I'm just going to cut that out. Actually, get, let's just get rid of the pins. Well, interestingly, it's subtitulos. Uh, subtitulos? Subtitulos. Like I'm watching this awful drama. Where is that lady from? Chile? I think so. Oh, well, I'm watching this, this drama. Did I say this last week? Set yes. in, in uh, Bogota in Colombia which I'm obsessed with at the moment. It's so good. Anyway, right, so here's the trumpet, okay? So you can obviously make this as wide or as uh, narrow as you want to. I'm gonna go with something that's not dissimilar to what I've got here already. So I'm actually just going to snip a little bit more of that off and make it something like that. Let's just go with that for now and I'll explain why in a second. Um, what the first thing to do here is to join this together. So ideally, you're going to be joining this together using felting needles and also using a bit of new wool as glue. So I often do this. So I'll use a new, a little bit of new wool tops to just help join it together. Now, it's very, going to be very difficult for me to show you what I'm doing here because it's kind of covered up but um, I've overlapped them and I'm actually just going to stab. Let me just see if I can show you, move you up a bit. There we go. I'm going to stab from the inside. So I've got my new wool tops on top of this as well, which is really going to help me join these two together. I'm just going to flip that inside. Okay. Well, obviously when you're doing these fiddly bits with the felting needles, do try and keep your fingers out of the way. Why? <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm just going to come around this end and I'm going to do it from this side as well. Now you may or may not have noticed that a bit of my foam is missing and that is because I cut it off earlier and I'll show you why in a second. Um, but if you have got a tiny little piece of foam, I might need to cut it further actually, that you're going to be able to fit inside the trumpet, that is going to help you achieve what you're trying to do as well. I'm actually just going to cut it further like that. And then I'm going to pop this in here. Okay, like so. And just squidge that in. And this is going to really help me. Now I can show you far more easily because now I'm going to go from the outside. Okay, 
and I'm really going to stab these together. All right. So again, using a little bit more of the wool on the outside is going to help here. So same colour, obviously. Once it's all felted together, you're never going to know. And actually, when you look at mine, where is the join? No way. Actually, I think it's there. But so again, it's about investing time in doing this properly. Okay. Well, you know, I say that, but goodness knows, I don't know. If, you, if you're not the sort of person that wants this to look like completely seamless and you do just want to throw it together, obviously that's absolutely fine and it's entirely your prerogative and up to you. But uh, for me, I just like things to look as real realistic as possible. And that's what I was aiming for when I was make doing the book, you know, and doing all of this. So that's what I'm showing you how to do as well. All right. So this is obviously my cut edge here. Can you see how sort of fluffy that is? And then this is my gorgeous finished edge that's going to go uppermost at the top here. But this one, I just want to explain, this is really quite heavily needle felted. I haven't got all the time in the world to show you exactly how to achieve that. But what I will say is the longer you spend on this and the more sort of new wool tops you add to it, the more sculptural you can be with it. Okay, I've gone a little bit, so it's not quite joined there. I'm just trying to sort of even that up a bit and get them. I don't want to cut this top, so I'm just going to squidge that down a little bit. Now, if you want to have a little go with our 36 gauge triangular, let me just show you that. Can you see the three clear facets, the three clear sides to that as I twist it round? That is a much sturdier needle that you would normally use for sort of quite big sculptural work. It's not as fine. It makes bigger holes, but sometimes it makes things happen faster. OK, so it's maybe a needle that you might choose to use at the beginning of the process. You're not going to be able to refine it with this, but it might just help you join things up right at the beginning so it's worth maybe investing in one or two of these i mean they're only 40p so very expensive. sophie on 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 the gram on the gram says is it possible mm -hmm. uh to felt the orange as mm. a tube in the first place so you don't have to join it well you can but it's much quicker and easier to just felt a flat piece of felt and create it from the flat piece of felt. But yes, if you want to, my don't brain, let me My stop brain you. is confusing me as to how you would even do a tube. Well, you'd have to make a template and create a, um, wrap the wool around both sides of the template and then remove the template at the end so you're left with what was wrapped oh, around I it. See. The trouble you've got with that is that you have less, um, you have less, control over the size of it I would say and if you've already made a complete ring it might not be the correct size for the shape that you cut out or you might have to cut the shape to match the ring and so on like so I think that you know when you can cut it out and join it together it gives you a lot more scope in terms of sizing is what I would say all right so I've managed to squidge that down a little bit so what I wanted to show you now is that you would then flare out the top of this kind of trumpet you want it to sort of come out a bit so it's not like just completely perpendicular um, and the way you would do that is again, it's really difficult for me to show you this, but I would pop it down like this, and then I would start to needle felt just at, at the top here. Um, now, you know, I got asked earlier, should you do this when it's dry or should you do it with it when it's wet? The advantage of working when it's wet is again, you can pull this out. So you can actually, I mean, I can do it a little bit now, but you can tease this out. When it's wet, it's really quite sort of malleable and stretchy. And you'd be able to tease that out and, and make it uh, more trumpet-like at the top really quite easily. So what you're, what you're calling the top now is the bottom down onto the felt. Yes. The top is always going to be this finished frilly edge. That's what I'm referring to as the top. The bottom is the cut bit. Okay. So I've got the bottom uppermost and I'm working on the top. And I'm just trying to sort of flare it out a little bit. The other thing I want to show you is I've created this kind of scallop. Oops, you love a scallop, don't you? I do love a scallop, my darling. You know that. Um, so I've created this sort of scallop going around here. And this is literally done 
by needle felting into it. Obviously, it's quite hard to do it when it's uppermost like that. But if you put it to the to one side, let me see if I can show you, and you do it from the side, you start needle felting in from the side, and then you can needle felt your scallop like that. Hopefully you can see what I'm doing, just. Okay, so that's how you would achieve that kind of scalloped frilly edge on the top. Okay, now this bottom bit here, this, this sort of cut bit, it's quite handy to have this quite fluffy because it's gonna help you um, needle felt it on to the base shape of the daffodil underneath. So by all means, just fluff that out even more. But what you do want to try and do, and I don't know how easy this is going to be for me to show you on camera, is you kind of want to tuck it. You want to tuck it in, okay? So, so, so it's going underneath like this. Uh, not underneath the yellow, sorry. It's going underneath itself, so you're tucking it underneath. And, and the way I would do that is to tuck one, one section of it. Can you see? Yeah, maybe you can actually. Uh, if I get the light on it, and then start to needle felt it on, all right? And again, really important to use some new wool here. Um, we can start off just by using orange here, <clears throat> just to try and get it to attach. If I can get the light on it, I think you can see it better. There we go. So I'm just going to stab that in. Maybe do it at a, f at a sort of each um, corner. So if you do it at <clears throat> four points around the circle, just to sort of get it in place, in the right place, because you don't want to attach this in the wrong place. So then just tuck under that bit there, get another little tiny bit of wool. And with this wool, I'm literally just screwing it up into a little tiny blob, okay? And then I'm just going to pop that in, and I'm just going to needle felt that in. And again, it's tucked under, okay? The Elf Times. Yeah. On the gram again. Hello. Are would the 25 the right grams wool tops be enough or would I be better buying 100 grams? You'd absolutely need 100 grams. So <clears throat> with the 25 wool, wool, um, gram wool top packs, they are designed really just to give you like a palette of colours if you just need a bit. So for example, for the gold, where's the gold? For the gold and for the green, that little bit that you get in the 25 gram bag would be fine. That would be enough. But you're not going to have enough of the orange or the yellow from that little little bag. So of the main colours for the main flowers that you want to make, get yourself the 100 gram bag. I mean, they're not expensive. It's only £4.60 or something. Um, and you do earn 10% rewards. Um, if you don't use a discount code, you'll always earn your 10%, okay? So um, it's worth just buying uh, the main colours of the flowers that you think you want to make. You know, like the, so in the book it tells you it's usually 30 grams that you're going to need for, for most of the flowers, for the main colours. And then it sometimes says <coughs> tiny bits of, okay? So I just want to try and show you how I've tucked that under and it's kind of tucked into the middle. Hopefully you can see that. And then once you've got that more or less attached, then you can start to add a bit more yellow in there on top, okay? And we can start to think about little stamens and so on. Sometimes you might want to work faster by holding two of these together. So I'm just going to try and stab that down. Sorry, it's under the camera, but not quite under my eyes. So I can't quite see what I'm doing. I don't want to put my hair into the shorts. You could felt that in as well. Yeah, I probably could. Um, but hopefully you can see what I'm doing. Hopefully you can see that it's tucked under and that that nice fluffy cut edge at the bottom has actually needle felted really nicely into this. Now again, invest some time in this, okay? So spending time just needling it from the outside once once you get that fresh wool in there okay it becomes more like a sculpture and you can really um sculpt the sides of it so i could make some little darts here you know like an actual flower might be you know it's not going to be a a perfect thing it's going to be the way that it's grown you know 
and you can add these little bits of interest in by just needle felting. This is all you need to create this and create all of these different sort of shapes here. So you want to create this trumpet shape. It's going in at the bottom. Here we go. It's going in at the bottom. It's flaring out at the top here, okay? And then you're creating these little shapes here. But also you can indent slightly at the sides here as well as you're going round. Now, so, go on. You, you, you need to put your foot down a little bit, Gillian. You've only got 15 minutes. Oh, sorry. Left. Okay, right. So tiny little bit of green is going to go in there as well, like that. Okay, and you can build that up with, the, with these colours and just keep building them up until you just get the effect that you want. Okay, so moving swiftly then on to stamens. Here's some I prepared. Oh, no, wrong one. Here's some I prepared earlier on this mat here. Sorry, back on me. I shall smile. Um, this is pretty quick, okay? I think I say in the book that you need to make three stamens about five inches long or something like that. But to make a stamen is super easy. All you need is some wool tops. You pull off a tiny bit, all right, okay? And just twist it, twist it so that you can see once it's felted, kind of roughly how big it will be, how wide it will be. That's what you want to do. You don't need it as long as that, okay? So like this, about that kind of length. You are going to need to get this through the eye of a needle. I mean, my famous yarn darners that I use for everything is what I use for this. And I have used my embroidery threader, fabulous invention, to thread it with as well. But basically, just pull yourself off the stamens, okay? I'm just going to reattach my spray attachment, partly so I don't just spill the water everywhere, but it's much easier to do it with this. And then I'm just going to spray this down. Oh, was that a sound effect? Oh. <laughs> oh. I broke too soon then. I thought you were about to thread something. No, darling, you're not listening. No, you're right, I'm not. <laughs> Anyway, spraying it down with soapy water and then just manipulating it a little bit to felt it a little bit, all right? Then this is really super easy, okay? I've got one that I did earlier, actually. But let me just put this one in the mat. Back to the overhead, please, Christophe. Thank you. All right, so you put your stamens out in your mat, okay? Get them, three of them lined up or whatever. Then you just flip the top of the mat over and then do this. Okay, we won't go on too long. But you can see what starts to happen. It just starts to felt the stamen. Okay, so you do this, you do this, you do this. You rinse it with some really hot water. Then you come back. Then you spray it again, yada, yada. And then you do that a bit more, another five minutes maybe. And then they're felted. Rinse the soap out. And then at this point, you can use this, which we sell on the website, called Stiffen Stuff. And you can Ooh, put some in I've a little... i missed that, haven't I? <laughs> Stiffen stuff for cool. stiffening needs. <laughs> Indeed, yes. And um, you can just put put some in a little bowl. You can you can actually add a little bit of water to it if you want to. And then you can just draw the stamen through it and leave it to dry straight if you want to. Okay. And then you do need to just get one through a needle, just okay, just through a needle. And then all you're going to do here once you've finished your daffodil, is you're going to sew down with the stamen and then you're going to come back up again, okay? And if you do that uh, with all of the three stamens, then you should have enough, and I'm just going to snip those off and then you can see that's kind of how I'm doing the stamens, okay? These are looking a bit squashed, actually. I think they've been in a box and got a little bit squashed. But actually, look, these are nice stamens here. These ones here. These ones I've made a little bit more orange and a little bit of green on the bottom there. Look, they're rather splendid, aren't they? So um, that's how you're going to do your stamens. You're just going to thread them through the eye of a needle, down and up again, do it several times with several of them, and there's your stamens, okay? And then that, my friends, is all there is to it. So you could add a brooch back to that, couldn't you? Oh, look at that. That'd be quite nice, wouldn't it? And, um, and, and how would you mount that brooch back? Brooch back mounting? That's oh, another, oh, oh. is that do another do video do entirely? Do 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 do. Sorry? Is that another video entirely? 
<laughs> I think you need to do a little jing, a little uh, sound bite for that. What do you call it? What? Sound effect. What? Broach back mounting. Oh, I'm not sure about that. <laughs> I don't. I don't think we need a tutorial for broach back mounting. It's basically getting a broach back and sewing it on the back. Or you okay. could, or you could use. Oh, gem tack for all your sticky needs. There we are. I knew he was dying to play that one. So there we go. I'm glad we got that in this week. All right. So that's it. Any more questions regarding the old felt daffodillies? Uh, aside uh, from someone wanting me to explain it in Spanish. Uh, hold on a minute. Let me just. Did you notice, though? I did get my claro que si. Uh, do you know what? No, I can't see any questions. Can't if you've got more. a question, ask it quickly. Quick, 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 quick for the questions. All right. So while people are thinking of a question, um, I'll explain what's happening next. I'm having a week off is what's happening next because it's Mother's Day and actually I'm not actually doing anything on Mother's Day because we're not allowed to are we I'm not seeing my mother I'm not seeing my kids so uh but you know um just having the weekend off basically so I will be back I'm planning a weaving project using wool tops that's coming I'm planning a new jewelry project where I've been um there'll be a kit and there'll be all sorts of gorgeousness and I'll be showing you how to make these little flower uh, flowers, flower bracelets, rings, necklaces, whatever. So that's coming. Um, and I will also be showing you drop spindle spinning at some point. Just need to make sure we've got everything that we need to do that. So I've got lots of things planned. I just need a little bit of time to get on top of everything. Um, so we will be back. So not next Sunday, but the Sunday after, which will be the... So 14, 7, 14, 21st of March. We'll be back on 21st of March, which most excitingly, I do believe, is the first day of spring, isn't it? Or have I got that wrong? Is it? Well, I don't know. I'm a bit confused about this because someone I know put on Instagram recently that it was March the 1st and I got a bit confused. Um, I don't know. When is the first day of spring? I thought it was March the 21st, but what do I know, hey? What do I know? So have we got any more? Have we got any more questions? No, I don't think you have any questions. <laughs> that's a um, good look. Thanks. Uh, that's a, yeah, a or, good look. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. Or. Huh? <laughs> or. Huh? No, it doesn't matter. No, we no. don't like that. I quite like this, though. Yeah? It's lovely. Thank you. All right, so if there's no more questions, well, if you think of any, you can always ask me on messages and um yeah i'll get back to you as soon as i can have a lovely rest of your sunday and your weekend wherever you are in the world if you haven't had sunday yet if you've already had sunday and i'll see you in a couple of weeks time bye for now wave jillian wave i'm waving wave. it's jillian it's jillian Bye.